Whether it's $250, $260, or $300, the Intel Arc B580 is one of the cheapest 12GB GPUs you can get on the market, brand new. In this video, I'll show you how to reliably get an LLM running on it in Linux with Llama CPP. I'll be using an A770 though, but this will work on the B580 too. Look, I wrote this intro after I made the rest of the video, okay? If you've been dying to know how to run LLMs locally on Intel Arc using Linux, this is the video for you. Instead of installing one API directly, I'm taking this on the road, or at least making things portable. I'll show you how to get this all running in Docker, well, Podman. Yes, I'll be setting up Llama CPP for inference inside a Docker container using Podman, and even dealing with SE Linux annoyances on Fedora-based systems, because I'm doing this on Ultramarine Linux. Whether you're on Ultramarine, Fedora, or something close, great. You can also do this on other distros because Docker makes things portable. I'll show you, at least to a limited degree, how to get this working elsewhere. You might not be able to do it on Cache, though, because wget support is spotty. Anyway, let's get started. First, let's install Podman. From what I can observe, Podman for the terminal isn't available in Discover, KDE's graphical software store app. So let's go to the Podman site and see if we can get the package for Fedora and Fedora-based systems like Ultramarine. Spoilers, we can. On the Podman website, you can find commands to download the CLI version for a wide range of Linux distributions. It's worth noting that Red Hat Enterprise Linux and possibly its downstream rebuilds have different installation instructions. Fedora Core OS and Silverblue, immutable versions of Fedora, already seem to include Podman by default. But on Ultramarine and Fedora, you can just enter sudo dnf y install Podman. Now that it's installed, Let's dive right in with the seals and get the Intel One API container by entering podman pull docker.io slash intel slash one API dash base kit colon latest. This container includes everything that comes with the One API base toolkit, so it's also quite large, around 13 gigabytes. The base toolkit seems to be an all-in-one package that covers many different One API use cases. Hopefully in the future, maybe with the launch of Battle Matrix, it will be broken down into smaller components relevant to specific use cases. Now, let's create an instance of the One API base kit container and set it up for AI inference with Llama CPP. I'll go line by line. First, let's enter podman run dash it dash dash name One API dash base. Podman run starts a new container. In this case, we're starting a new instance of a container we already downloaded with the intent to add functionality to it. The dash IT flag tells Podman to make the container interactive, to allocate a terminal, so that we can type commands inside of the container. We're going to name the container one API base with the dash dash name flag. The next line, dash dash device slash dev slash DRI or Dream Oops. mounts your host system's dev slash DRI directory, which contains files called device nodes, which represent devices. In this case, connected GPUs to your host or bare metal system. Moving on, the line after that is dash dash group dash add video. This adds the container user to the video group. This allows the container to actually access the GPU that's being passed through. In the next line, dash e one API underscore device underscore selector, that's all caps, equal level underscore zero colon GPU, everything after the equal is lowercase, sets an environmental variable that tells one API to use its level zero backend for GPU compute. This flag also signals to the container that you're using an Intel GPU. After that, docker.io slash intel slash one API dash base kit colon latest tells Podman which container to instantiate in building this new container. This is a Docker container, and I'm using Podman, which is okay, because Podman is mostly a drop-in replacement for Docker. Bash tells Podman to run the born-again shell, 
or what we normally call the terminal inside of the container. And now you see root at all of those random characters. They'll be different for you, and that means we're inside of the container. The commands you enter now are being passed to the container instead of your host. As a precaution, I'll run source slash opt slash intel slash one API slash setvars dot sh. In most cases, this isn't necessary because the official container officially sets up these environment variables automatically. As you can see, I get a warning saying the variables have already been applied. Next, I'll run sickle-ls to make sure that the container sees my graphics card, and also to prove to you that the container can see the A770 connected to my system. I think it would be cool if it were sysl, like Cecil instead of sickle. Now, I'll change the directory using CE to the container's home directory. Next, let's clone LlamaCPP from its GitHub repository using the git clone command. So that goes into the container's home directory. The newly cloned directory's name is llama.cpp, and I'm going to cd into that directory. What am I going to do there? Well, I'm going to check out a specific commit in the repository. Oh boy, you might not know what that means. Think of a Git repository like an audio cassette. The head is what reads the tape. The repository, or repo, is the tape. And each commit is like a different section that was recorded. By moving the head, you can jump to different commits that have been pushed to the repository. I'm going to point the head to a commit from back in May of 2025. That allows Llama CPP and Sickle to work with Battlemage GPUs. Git checkout 24E86CA721. That kind of feels like I'm reading a star date. But anyway, the actual hash is much longer, but when referring to a git commit by hash, you usually need a few characters. Hopefully, future commits on main will include these changes by default, so you don't have to use this older commit. Now that that's out of the way, cd into the llama.cpp directory. When you're there, make a directory named build and change into that directory with mkdir or mkdir build and and ampersand ampersand cd build. I made a mistake Oops. entering the next command, so let me put the right command over the error. The command is cmake dot dot. This gets CMake to look one directory level up into the llama.cpp directory where the CMake list.txt file resides. Dash all caps D llama underscore sickle equal on. Dash all caps again DC make underscore CXX underscore compiler equal. Now lowercase ICPX. And finally dash uppercase D llama underscore curl equal off. CMake generates build files in preparation of building an application from source. Next, we run make, where you actually compile the application. To do this, your next command will be make dash dollar sign j open parens end proc close parens. Now, to let llama cpp build. All right, now to exit the container and get back to your bare metal system in the terminal. We're going to commit the changes we made to that instance of the one API base container. Exiting the container doesn't automatically save the changes we made in the previous container. And on the command line, there is no save button like a word processor. Instead, to keep those changes, we need to commit the container. Committing takes the current state of the container, everything we installed and built, in the case of the container we just exited, and saves it as a new image. You can think of it like creating a snapshot that you can run later, and can also create new instances of, without having to repeat all the setup steps. So here, I'm going to enter the command podman commit 1api-base-1api-llama-cpp. 1api-base is the base of the container we just exited, and 1api-llama-cpp is the name of the container that we're working towards. Okay, done. Now, if you're not in your system's home directory, change directories into your home directory with cd tilde. When you get there, make a directory named llama underscore models, 
with MKDIR, we're creating a models directory on your regular or bare metal system outside of the container that you can route access to from any number of containers you create later, where you can download models and store here and use in your future containers. Now, CD into the llama underscore models directory. You could have done the and and thing we did earlier too. I'm going to use wget to download the gguf version of Mistral 7 billion instruct. This version has been quantized to 4-bit precision. I'm getting it from the bloke off of Hugging Face, who was a prolific model quantizer until early last year. If you're really into models, you may notice that I'm using a two-year-old model. Well, yes. When I started working with LLMs, I really started off with just seeing how to get them working on Arc and Linux. I've also been testing LLMs on other hardware, which I plan to make content about soon. Honestly, I just wanted to get back to making videos again, and focusing on that came with a bit of a trade-off. I've been curious about Mistral, and really a lot of different models, so I just grabbed the first Mistral GGUF I found and used it. I'll make sure to use newer models in future videos, if it matters. So the next step, I ran into an error, and I want to explain why. For various reasons, I ended up trying out this workflow on different distributions over the past few weeks. And for most of them, whether it be Mint or Kashi or OpenSUSE, I would just be able to enter what you see right now on screen, no problem, and proceed. But this time, in Ultramarine, I kept getting an error. This is because in Ultramarine Linux, and at least some Fedora-based distributions, as well as RHEL and its downstream derivatives, a kernel module named SE Linux is enabled by default. When this is the case, there's a minor modification to the Podman Docker container instantiation command that you have to make. I'll talk about it when I get to it as soon as I type the command out. Alright, let's go through this. This should look familiar. Podman run starts a new container. Dash IT makes it interactive so you can type commands. Dash dash name one API dash LLM names a container one API dash LLM. Dash dash device slash dev slash tree or dry backslash passes through my GPU so the container can access the GPU which is right now an ARC A770 backslash means next line dash dash group dash add video adds the container user to the video group now here's where things get tricky dash v tilde slash llama underscore models colon models mounts the system directory tilde slash models from your system into slash models inside the container, at least in most distros. In distros that have SE Linux enabled, like Ultramarine and Fedora, you need colon lowercase z at the end. As far as I know, lowercase z lets multiple containers access or share access with the same directory, and uppercase z only allows the single container you're provisioning at the time access or private access. When the container starts, change directory into slash root slash llama dot cpp slash build using cd. Generally, in containers where you're running as root, slash root serves as the home directory. From there, let's run mistral 7 billion with this command. Dot slash bin slash llama dash cli dash ngl 99 dash m slash models slash the name of the model, which in this case is Mistral 7 billion instruct version 0 0.1 q4 dot gguf dash p. I'll open double quotes and I'll use the pound signs, hashtags, octothorps, whatever you call them for padding and put in the question and leave space for the response and close the double quotes. <laughs> And VLA, we get a response. If you find or know a better way to enter this command, then please use the command that works best for you. And maybe share your command form. And that's it. You've now got Llama CPP running inside a Podman container with GPU access on Linux. Whether you're using an A770 like me or the cheaper B580, and it is cheaper, this setup should work just fine. Yeah, it's a bit of a journey, but once it's up, it's clean, repeatable, and portable. If this helped you out, let me know in the comments. If you have a question, leave a comment and I'll try to help out. Thanks for watching.